This meeting is a bit hard. Oh, oh. Cool. This is Steve from Boxing UK. Delighted to be joined by everyone's favourite Australian, Ebony Bridges. How are you? I'm good. It's been a long time. I think this is like my first interview for like for ages, like five weeks or more, maybe. I had like maybe one or a couple straight after my fight and then I just went like in a hiatus, just focused on myself. Good lass. Um, I think it's safe to say I have got no idea how this is going to go based, based on our <laughs> WhatsApp messages earlier. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this could be a, this could be some ride. Oh, it's always a good ride with me. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. I'll just line them up for you, Ebony. <laughs> uh, obvious place to start the, the last time we saw you out again, Shannon. Uh, yeah. First things first, how's the eye? Eye's good. All good. Um, I mean, I've, you know, done some sparring and stuff since. It took about it took about three weeks to actually aesthetically, like physically look all right. Um, but then it was really tender for another couple of weeks after that. So, but yeah, I feel like it's fine now. It's good. Happy days. The main thing that you can take away from that, and I think boxing fans in general have lavish the praise on you you proved you can fight yeah <laughs> I told you guys <laughs> yeah I think um and I was really good um not just that I can fight and I think it's just my fight style which is you know it's an exciting fight style everyone kind of likes a pressure fighter and an aggressive fighter um and you know I, I always say that and I know with my personality because I'm bubbly and I'm joke around and stuff people you know they question it and they think that I don't take things serious so that I'm not a serious fighter but I think um I proved just the kind of fire, fighter I have I am the kind of heart that I have and um that you know like I'm tough as fuck really so you definitely proved that did as the fight was going did you score it in your head Ebony as you were as the rounds were ticking by and was it the no. eye was the main thing <laughs> Yeah, and no, I was scoring it. Um, I was like, it was about like the seventh round um, that my eyes started like closing. Like it was like, you know, I could still see out of a little bit. The eighth, it was like, I was like really trying to, you know, I, I there's even photos where I'm like trying to open this eye more because I can't actually open this eye. And then the ninth round, like my, my corner was like telling me to do things. And that's when like Shannon caught me but she was he was telling my corner was telling me to do things but I couldn't actually do because I couldn't see like I couldn't see the punches like really coming um so that's why you know after that ninth rounder I just went back to them and I was like look I, I can't see and it wasn't because I wanted the fight to stop at all because I would never uh, like I'd never want them to stop the fight but it was just like okay look I can't actually see so we're gonna have to come up with like a different game plan you're gonna have to give me some different kind of directions because yeah what they were kind of telling me to do it just I couldn't I couldn't do it you know do you think you've done enough to earn another shot? Because everybody said they'd love that rematch again at some point. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, I've scored the fight um, myself since watching it, and um, I think it's a draw at the worst. I could even give my, like see myself winning that fight. You know, um, I don't really know like what the commentators were watching, um, even the judges really, but um, especially those first few rounds. Like, I mean, um, I, I I was quite shocked at that. But you know what I. I don't make, you know, I don't make any excuses um, at all. You know, um, I, I could come up with, you know, a million reasons of why um, I, I didn't win that fight or, or how I could win that fight better, you know, um, but not really about excuses. But I do think that, you know, get me out there um, for a rematch, you know, two wise, not travelling through three different time zones and continents in three weeks. I think those little things would make a bit of a difference as well. Um, but, you know, who knows? Um but I think it was a very close fight. And I think, um, yeah, like those last two rounds, everyone's saying they're deciding. I actually think I won the 10th round, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so Fair it is on. what it is. For me, it was a good experience and it was a good, um, what's the word, uh, like welcoming to, I suppose, the UK fans, but also like globally because I know that I had a lot of people all around the world tuning into that fight, you know. Like I had a lot of people in America, you know, Mexicans, Argentines. I had a lot of people tuning in, into that fight. It wasn't just the British, um, even though it was in the UK. Um, you know, I had global global viewing on that. So um, I had like 
inboxes from you know box from you know high high up you know top five boxes around you know around the world messaging me um and saying they watched my fight and stuff and you know people that wouldn't even think that would have watched the fight and they watched it so quality yeah that was exciting yeah quality can we ask a couple of post fight questions what's yeah. the thing what's the relationship between you and shannon light now because it was quite frosty fight there is no relationship so you haven't you haven't <laughs> no kissed. relationship all right so you haven't kissed and made up or anything no because no she's <laughs> still think she's a twat <laughs> oh. <laughs> Right, and right. like I kind of like had to force the hugs and stuff, you know what I mean? Like it is, it is what it is. Um, and look, I look forward to a rematch, and I'm gonna fucking kiss and make up, and then you know go into the rematch or buddy buddy. Fuck that. There's gonna be more. It's just gonna be more. It's gonna be worse the next the next time round. You know. So there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely want the rematch. Did you ever agree on the yeah, lingerie debate? Really the lingerie debate. Yeah. Oh, she was the one that kept bringing that up and talking about that. Fuck, get over my lingerie. Just let me do it. And you do you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a bit annoying. But, hey, I look good. I broke the internet with my wings and I'll keep doing that. And, um, you know, getting people wanting to watch. So, yeah. Look and forward the to one, the next one. That's for sure. Absolutely. And the last one on that, just a personal thank you for the name Drop of Boxing UK live on Sky Sports twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Hey, I dropped it a couple of times. It was a bit like, she's like trying to tell me she remembers how it all started. And I'm like, hey, chill out. You don't. Like, and then she changed the story constantly. And I'm like, mate, you, you don't really know what you're saying now. So I had to like point it straight because, you know, I knew. But yeah, anyway, that's done. And and I look for, you know, I think the rematch has to happen. I, um, I don't know who else she's going to fight, really, like that she, she thinks she can beat, um, like as in the champions from other countries and stuff like that. I think her best option and her best payday would to be fighting, fight me again. Yeah, the only other name I could think of off the top of my head, Ebony, would probably be Rachel Ball if she's up for it. Which I'm sure they're going to fight anyways, you know what I mean? But, I mean, outside of Rachel, yeah, like, you know. Well, that, that brings us on to you. Obviously, your stock has risen quite highly after that. Yeah. If, you, if you look at your comments, if there anything to go by, Ebony, everybody asks you, has Eddie signed you up? When are you next out? Can can you tell us anything? I know. I mean, I'm I'm I see like every day, um, and it's it's hard for me because um, I am in. I have been in talks with Eddie since my fight. Um, you know, he says a lot of things, but to me, it's like, you know, I need action. You know, you can say as much as you want. Um, but if you don't have a pen on paper, um, you know, giving me a contract, you know, saying like a promotional contract, then to me, it's just like dangling carrots in front of me. You know what I mean? And I don't know what the go is if it's putting me on hold. So, you know, other promoters can't come in. I don't, I don't really know. Like I want to fight with my dream. I do want to have those fights with Courtney and, and, you know, we've talked about, um, certain fights, you know, he has mentioned me fighting in Leeds and things like this. And obviously I want to fight before then as well. Because for me, that's ages away. Like, I've been away from home for ages. For me to wait another, what, three months, four months to, like, fight, you know. So it's, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating um, because it feels like I'm making groundwork and I'm having good com and having those conversations. Um, but it's just, like, at the moment, it feels a bit like a lot of empty promises. Um, so I don't know, you know. For me, give me a contract, put it up on paper, give me something to sign, and then I'll start believing it. But... You know, my whole life and, and especially like with boxing, there's so many people that just talk fucking shit. Like they just talk shit. They just, um, you know, blow smoke up your ass, um, empty promises just because whatever they want to keep keep you close or they want something out of you, you know what I mean? And um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sceptical and, and because of that and because I've been for pretty much my whole life, like, you know, the amount of people that approached me and stuff since my fight, it's just like, it's ridiculous. And it's just all because of something like, there's all obviously motives behind it. Um, but yeah, so I just feel like, um, I don't know, I, I hope for the fans and, and, you know, because it's obvious what they want that, um, you know, Eddie sort something out with me. 
Um, but yeah, at the moment, like I said, it's just back and forth talking, you know, this and that. And I'm like, like how much talking you want to do? <laughs> let's give the fans what they want. Let's sign me. Let's get me, you know, let's get me over there. Let's get something. Let's give them something to talk about other than begging and fucking literally begging to get me, get me signed with Matchroom and begging to get me over there, you know, but like you said, my, my stocks have risen and, um, you know, um, I, I don't keep my book closed. I put all my eggs in one basket. So, you know, there's always going to be a plan B for me, plan C for me. So whatever happens, happens. But obviously, you know, Eddie is my first option, but I think it's time that the, the, the carrots need to stop fucking dangling and we need to get some pen on paper. So, you know. How close have we been? Ebony, do you actually sign in with Matchroom or agree in a fight? No. Has it been close or? <clears throat> yeah, we've talked, we've talked, we've talked fight, fight dates. We've definitely talked fight dates, but nothing's been um, secured. Nothing's been confirmed. Um, we've talked promotion, um, you know, getting with Matchroom. But again, it's just talk. Like, let's talk more action. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, um, but, you know, Eddie's a busy man. He's gone through a lot of shit, but I, I'm sure he has a team behind him that does all that as well. So, I don't know. Um, hopefully it comes through, you know, um, for, you know, for me, for the fans, that'd be good. But either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get a fight no matter what because I'm obviously, like you said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, my stocks are up. I'm wanted. I'm, I'm knowing people want to see me fight again. And I don't think they care where I fight, even my British fans. They don't care if I'm fighting on Matrim, if I'm fighting on Frank Warren, if I'm fighting on Trilla. They don't care because they're still going to watch because they're like me. Not It's not about the promotion, you know, so... I'm, I don't think I can lose whatever happens. Yeah, you mentioned Triller there. I saw one of your recent posts about you think they've made an appearance on the Triller card? The yeah. Lopez Cambosis. I'm sure that's not just to support your fellow Australian. <laughs> Are you after some of those Triller books? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, there's always um, reasons. I don't just go around socialising for the sake of socialising. You know, um, there's always method to my madness. And um, definitely, I think Triller's, um, you know, obviously the fact that Cambosis, George Cambosis, fellow Australians fighting, and also my good friend, French from Cruz, who I love so much, um, I do want to go support them. But if I can do that as well as, you know, get out to those fights and get my names out there, you know, um, it's a big event. You know, a lot of people go to those events. Um, it's very kind of, yeah, as you know, like, Hollywood, like, you know, influencer kind of um, kind of fight thing. But I just think, um, you know, it's just about building my name and my brand and, um, you know, I want to be global. Um, I want to be known all around. I've got a good following. In, I've got a huge following in the UK. I've got a big following in the US as well. But, you know, US is a big country. So, um, you know, if I can get my get my name out there, if I can, you know, have check out Triller, if I like Triller and, you know, like what they do things, I don't know, I haven't really looked into it but you know um it's good to to see things and and check out different things and how different things are done because um like i said previously you know you can't just you can't just put your eggs in one basket because especially when you're relying on other people you know i've learned that over many years you can't rely on anyone you can't trust really anyone you can't believe anyone so in that case you always need to have kind of backups you know and so i'll always go around to the fights and stuff look if i was exclusive if i was with a promoter and i was exclusive with them, then I probably wouldn't support any like other promoters, and I wouldn't go too much trying to um, use my platform to promote other other prom um, promotion co companies or other fights. But at the moment, I'm still a free agent, and I'm just doing what I'm doing, you know. So get my name out, you know. See the fans, support George, support Franchon. I think it's all tick tick wing win for me. Absolutely. Can we talk about what you've done personally since? You were in the ring as well. You spent a couple of weeks yeah. after that in the UK. Yeah. How did, that, how did that go down? How did meeting the UK public go down? Any favourite places? Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely loved the UK. I loved it. Um, I loved going around to the gyms and meeting like all little girls and stuff. And I loved um, going to Leeds and, and meeting like, you know, um, that community and going to Ellen Road. Um, it was amazing. I was so welcome and so warm in 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 the UK, um, and it was so surreal as well. Just walking around the street, getting stopped, and like cafes getting stopped, and you know, everywhere I went, I was like recognised. And um, then I did that foot, the soccer AM, and then that just pushed kind of you know my 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 face out more to like you know more people, and it was just really really 
surreal, but really, um, like, I really enjoyed it because I just love people, you know. I love meeting people and I love if I can make a fan happy by, by meeting them or taking a photo or, or anything like that. To me, those little moments, like, mean it's so, such a big thing to a lot of people and especially, like, the kids and stuff. Like, you can just say a couple of words to some kids and it could mean so much to them. So it's just really warming for me to be able to have that ability with my platform and with, with where I am in my boxing to be able to, you know, make people smile and make people's days and stuff like that. Like, I love that. Um, and then, yeah, Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went to Mexico. Now nah, that was fun. You've not rested, have you? I saw in Mexico. Oh, my God. Been... Well, I was kind of resting. But Mexico, I went to start, like, you know, camp for the September, um, September, for summer, sorry, because I want to be fighting in, in summer. So I was like, okay, you know, and, um, you know, Mariana Juarez, um, Mariana Barbie Juarez, she's, like, my idol, you know, like, I've, man, like, she, she's been, she's been a champion in, in Bantamweight for, like, 20 years, you know. So, you know, and she's Mexican and she's she's beautiful and she's just, um. Yeah, it was just so amazing to be able to go into her her camp and, and be with her leading into her fight and do some rounds of sparring and training with the Mexicans. And she taught me so much and she just took me right under her wing, you know, in her house. And it was just really amazing experience for me. Um, I learned so much while I was over there. And they love me over there. Like, you know, like they were like, oh, you know, they've had a lot of people coming into their gym for camps and stuff. And they just loved how much I was willing to learn and how much I listened and how when they told me to do things, I did it. And, you know, the, the heart, like, you know, Mariana kept saying about my heart because I got over there, I flew in, like, however many hours it was, like 11, 12 hours or something. Um, then slept a couple of hours, not bad, you know, jet lag. And then I got up that morning and was just doing sparring, like, you know, Mexican styles, forming around with these champions <laughs> you know but like I was in the altitude don't you like the altitude is crazy man like I was like choking but because of the that heart I have and that no quit and I just won't stop you know like and I think I really respected that and um and they really um they could see that I have that in me you know that fighting spirit so that was really cool um and then because I pretty much just went <laughs> from like zero to 100 in Mexico in high altitude um after a couple of days I got really sick like altitude sickness, I was getting um, you know, headaches, like bloating, um, like my digestive was wrong. I was sick. So I kind of then had to back off the training a little bit because I was just wrecked, man. Like I was literally fucked. Like, um, and it was frustrating because I was trying to train through it, but it was just, you know, like even Mariana was like, you just need to chill. I'm like, okay. Then I felt a little bit better. So I got back into another couple of days of training. And then when I got sick, with um, Montezuma's Revenge, apparently that's what they call it over there. Um, it's a, it's the traveller's a traveler's sickness that you get from the water and the food, you know, because yeah. I was brushing my teeth with the water. I wasn't drinking the water, but I didn't think, uh, you know, I'm blonde. I didn't think, like, you know, brushing your teeth is might as well just drink the water. Yeah. And so then I got really sick, like vomiting. Um, for a British audience. Bug. For, just for a British audience. Yeah, for is, a couple- is that the shits? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, I was like shit my pants every day. Like, <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> not quite, but yeah, I mean, I made it to the bathroom. But I'm um, actually, the altitude sickness was making me vomit. I, from the, the first week, I was vomiting just from the altitude. Um, Yeah, and then I hurt my elbow. You might have seen that on my social media. I was getting treatment while I was there for my elbow. Um, Yeah, so it was a rough ride. It was very, um, but I, I still, even though it was rough and I was, I had a couple of days where I was like stuck in bed, you know, and, it was very intimate in training. I still learned so much, you know, um, just what they were teaching and just being around someone so experienced like Mariana and so knowledgeable, you know, like she's had like like 45 title fights, like, you know, 30-something world title fights, you know. She's she's been boxing for like 20, 23 years or something, you know. Like you just experience, you can't buy experience, you know, and being able to move with someone like that to have someone like that like in my corner or talk to me and train with me and, and spar and be able to see what she does and like you know I'm really visual so like mimicking and stuff it was just such a big it was such a great experience for me even though I was sick it was still it was still well well worth the trip brilliant and how much do you think that'll influence you when you get back in the ring Ebony do you think that'll make you a better fighter yeah definitely oh definitely yeah um I, you know the, the stuff I learned I can just it's, it's like gold you know, um, so, you know, obviously depending on the fight style that I, you know, the next opponent that I have, but, um, yeah, it's definitely going to help that Mexican style that I have to really um, see that inside stuff and, 
yeah, just a lot of things. I don't want to give away too much. But, um, yeah, a lot of things. Like, I was kind of old school, but, like, good. So if you were to get the rematch, that you've, you've obviously got some new things that you could implement. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she'll probably run away from me the whole time. I doubt she'll get stuck in any exchanges with me, even though she's a come forward fighter, apparently. But, um, yeah, she doesn't didn't want to come forward with me. So uh, I think with Shannon, there's, you know, I, I see her, if we would do a rematch, I think she'd just kind of try and box on the back foot even more and really, really um, stay away from exchanges with me. Um, so that's a different, you know, something more that I have to work on. Obviously, like, you know, knowing her style for the last fight, um, I was expecting a lot more. Even though a lot of people said it was like really good back and forth kind of warring fight, we weren't in the centre ring. It was never a centre, we were never just sitting in the centre ring training. You know, it was always me chasing and hunting and, and whatever. And then she kind of get caught up sometimes because she wouldn't move her feet. But it was not like sit toe to toe trading kind of fight, you know, which I thought it might have been. Um, so, yeah, there's, of course, you learn a lot of things and um, she would have learned a lot as well because one of the first things she said to me after, um, you know, she won, she came up to me and she was like, you know, I really, fuck, I really fucking underestimated you. You know what I mean? So now if we would have a rematch, she'll go in there without that underestimation. So she'll come back better as well. And, you know, like, and I, and I definitely think that. So, yeah. If I was to give you a crystal so, Nick, ball. I think it's only going to be better the second time, possibly. I mean, we're both going to be better the second time around. Fingers crossed. If I was to give you a crystal mm. ball, Ebony, what do you think is going to happen over the next few weeks? <laughs> crystal ball or a fucking genie wish wish, uh, genie wish fucking lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Either or. Which one is it? <laughs> what I think What I is going to happen? Look, I, I, I think I'm probably going to go to the Triller, Triller event. Um, I want to go to that. And um, I'm here in Philly, you know, I'm with Kaylee. Kelly Rees, she's in camp as well. We're both training, you know, hoping to get these fights July, August, September. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to work on, you know, my boxing and um, getting back my conditioning and stuff. I've had a good little break and that. And now, you know, time to put my head down and really just uh, focus on my training. Um, hopefully Eddie will send something through, you know, something something that's, you know, written down on paper um, that I can believe in and, you um, Put my put my you know eggs in that basket i want to work with like i'd love to work with eddie i'm a good asset you know like i know you know i promote myself but i also promote the company i promote whoever's with me whoever's in my team if if, if matchroom is part of my team then they're going to get promotion from me as well you know what i mean um and i want to do that because I, I like helping the people around me and i like you know pushing people's names as you see me on twitter and stuff or my friends or whatever you know so if you're working with me you're in a team and and I want to be working together going forward with the same goal and the same dream. Um, so whoever it is, um, that's that's what I want. Um, and, yeah, let's see. Uh, Hopefully fight before September. But it does look like I will be – I mean, it'll be fucking – he'd be a fucking dumbass to not fucking put me on that lead show straight up, like dumb. So I do think that lead show is going to happen. He has mentioned it in a in a um, interview. So that's September, the Warrington show. Um, but again, like I said, there's, there's nothing on paper. So until that is, yeah, it's just all all up in the air. Magic. I'll give you a little bit of time to think of the next one because um, I'm going to ask you to end with a message directly to Eddie. But I did promise some, oh. follow, I did promise some follower questions, Ebony. And I know, you've oh, seen yeah. one, okay. <laughs> I know you've seen one or two of them. So I'm just going to dig, the, I'm just going to dig them out. Uh, the first one. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Ebony, does her uppercut to the tits hurt? <laughs> hey, can you repeat that? Does an uppercut That's to the tits hurt? That's when he's Do the tits hurt? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, do they hurt? I don't know. It just is... Uh, does an uppercut to the tits hurt? Oh, does an uppercut? I can't yeah. understand your fucking word. Okay. Does <laughs> an uppercut to the tits hurt? Look, I'm being straight up here. I don't think I've ever copped an uppercut to the tits, to be honest. Um, and if I have, I don't know about it. So it probably doesn't hurt. I don't actually, it doesn't actually hurt to get punched in the chest at all. Um, and I think it's probably, I mean, I never get punched in the chest because most people are usually aiming for my head. 
you know, or my guts, like my stomach, you know, like I know they're big and they're hard to miss, but realistically when my, <laughs> when my hands are up, they're, they're covered. And if I have to be slack, if I'm a bit slack and my hands are down, they're covered. So it's not often that my, my chest is, is, you know, there to be really hit, you know, and I don't, there's no girls that are like, I can go smash tits. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I think they're more interested in punching my face than my chest. So yeah, right. I mean, maybe I'm just not as sensitive as some women, but no, they're good. Next one. I don't know if these questions say more about the people that follow you, Ebony. Uh, the biggest, <laughs> what's I'm pretty the biggest... sure it was your. I'm pretty sure it was your tweet. Yeah, I've tried to divert it there though. What's the biggest animal you think you could cling film to a lamppost? That I could cling film. Yes. So the biggest animal you animal. cling film to a lamppost. Depends on how much cling fill whatever I have. I don't know, like you could cling fill anything to you could cling fill you could probably cling fill anything to a lamppost if you had enough thingy. Right. I wouldn't want to do that anyways, poor animals. That's okay. sick. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Would you rather be attacked by a dozen duck sized horses or one horse sized duck? Doesn't duck size a dozen duck sized horses? I just kick them in the head, like kick them. Right there, we go. That's slack though. Uh, sensible yeah. one. Have any lingerie okay. companies approached you offering your sponsorship? No, but I did reach out to one that I really liked, but I don't know what. Like they didn't take it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Not actually. Was it laundry? Oh, yeah. I, actually, there was one that didn't reach out to me. It reached out to someone who was trying to be my agent, <laughs> but I kind of didn't really need, I don't really want the help, and I don't really believe bull, fucking shit. Like, you know, whether or not that was true, who knows? Because, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people talk shit. So, yeah, no, no one yet. I'm happy just wearing what I like to wear. I did, someone did ask me about it, how much I would charge to wear the laundry. And I just said, well, it just depends if it's nice and if I like it because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wear something just for money. I, I want to wear, I like to wear my things that I like to wear. So, you know, it just depends. Magic. And last one, have the Australian press finally taken notice of you since your fight in the UK? I mean, yeah, like I was actually getting a lot of Australian press beforehand, anyways. To be honest, like especially for you know a female boxer, I was getting quite a bit of traction. Um, but yeah, definitely after, I mean, the amount of articles that Australia was writing on me on all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I think um, definitely after the fight, Australia, but also uh, just the world in general. You know what I mean? It's just, it was just about, you know what, that it was like, for me, there was a lot of obviously hype around me. Um, of people, you know, fell in love with me as the, as the, as a person, the blonde bomber, who I am, my, you know, my, my, my mission, you know, my, my message, my person, um, but they still were unsure of how I boxed, you know, because that was the reality, you know, like, can she actually box? So the fact that I fought and that not only did I fight just like, you know, I can, I can kind of fight, like I fight one of the best female fights, like, you know, of recent times. Um, I fought with one eye to prove that I'm, you know, some men quit for less than that. Like, you know, like, you know, you see people quit for a lot less than that, like any excuse to get out of it. You know, and the way I look and the way I am, people would probably think that I would be a little pansy girl and just like, okay, yeah, like whatever, you know, but I showed that that I continue to show throughout my life that I just I break stereotypes and I'm not, you can't judge a book by its cover and I'm not, you can't look at me and, and tell that's how I'm going to box or that's how I'm going to be or that's what I'm going to like, you know. So, yeah, um, I think it was really good to be able to show that and I think that the now the, the world is a lot more open arms to me and a lot of a lot of what do you call them doubters and a lot of people that were hating and and whatever because you know they didn't believe that I was legit um to turn their tune and I'm happy with that you know what I mean like if I had haters before that are now believers and haters before that are now like now appreciate me then that's cool man I'm open arms like I welcome you fans you know people can change their mind people can open their eyes it's the ones that don't you know the ones that are still stubborn no matter what they just want to fucking hate and they just want to just like, they're the ones that, you know, like it's their problem, obviously. But if you want to like, go, you know what, actually I fucking like this chick. Like she's all right. You know, and like she can fucking box. I was wrong. She's not just a Barbie. Like she, she, she can fight. 
and then they, you know, they pay me, um, uh, pay me tribute. You know, um, I had some people even saying to me, "Look, I didn't know you before, but I've seen you. Like, wow, you know, I'm impressed, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan now. You know, and that's the shit. Like, that's mad. And a shout out to my OG fans, the ones that supported me all the way and had my back the whole way. You know what I mean? Like, they believed me no matter. They didn't need to see it. They just believed and they knew it and they supported me from the start. And I was glad that I was. I, I, unfortunately, you're not able to win, but I put on a performance uh, good enough to show that, you know, I am the real deal. And in the end, boxing's boxing and anything happens and you win or lose, but it's just how you carry it, I think, and, and how you act. And I'm pretty sure I proved and showed that, hey, you can actually lose and win or you can, you know, you can't just be humble in, in, in victory and, and, you know, without being good with defeat. Like you have to, you know, you have to have both. So. Absolutely well said. And I think. Yeah. I think as we started off at the interview, Ebony, you've certainly turned a few heads with your boxing ability. Right, la- last one. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, since like our very first interview. <laughs> last one, I promise. Uh, you said Eddie signing with Matchroom's your first choice. Have you got a direct yeah. message for him? Uh, Eddie, mate, look, enough of the talk. Let's talk more action. If you want to get me on Matchroom, if you want to make the fans happy and you want to, you know, get the blonde boy over there, let's get some pen on paper, get it sent over to me and let's do it. You know, um, let's stop fucking around. I'm not here to fuck spiders. I'm here to get the job done. I'm here to, here to promote women's boxing and myself and Matchroom if you want, want it there. So let's make it happen. Well said. We'll cut that bit out and directly tag him in, Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ebony, it's Shit. been a pleasure as ever. <laughs> Anything else before we go? No. No. That's, right. that's it. Thanks. Right. Thanks for thanks for the chat. I should probably, you know, get out a few more interviews like now. Come out of my little shell and my hole. But um, yeah, it was a pleasure. As you know, you've always been my day one as well. I've always loved interviews with you, so I do appreciate it. And um I love the traction and congratulations on um reaching those breaking those records the other day, I seen. Yeah. You had you. all those views. Seven million hits, yeah. Seven get, million. I thought I was, thought it was that. I was like, was it seven million? It was seven million. That's pretty good, man. We get um, so keep up the good work. Yeah, and you know, fun. I always, I always push you, push you, mate, because I do appreciate, and I think your interviews are class. You're a superstar. We'll definitely cut and tag that one out as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ebony Bridges, always a pleasure. No doubt. Right. We'll speak very soon. See ya, mate. Uh, keep safe.